the known self cannot find reality. The personal self with which you are so familiar can never rise above its own level. All it can do is repeat itself on its own level, repeating the same ideas, religious ideas, worldly ideas. All it can do is repeat on the horizontal level. It can never rise up in the air. And it is extremely important for you to understand these opening comments. Because if you understand what they are all about, you will also have insight into why you have not changed your nature. You will understand why you are still a captive of your own irritations, of your own bewilderments about life. You will understand the cause, the causes, where you went wrong, and understanding those causes thoroughly you will then see that they are faults, and the seeing of the faults will put them in back of you so that there is room for something different. Trying to change your known nature, made up of ideas and experiences, convictions, whether they're religious or social ideas you have about yourself, trying to change your ideas only results in you acquiring a new kind or a new set of ideas on the same level. Therefore, your basic nature remains unchanged. You're still a captive of yourself. It's like having an automobile and trying to make that automobile fly. An automobile is made to go horizontally along the ground, and that's fine for that purpose. You have an intellect. And the purpose of that intellect, one purpose, is to enable you to function properly in this life, to carry out in your business world, in your family life, or whatever. However, can you understand, please try to understand, that the mind you use to conduct your trade, or to raise the children, or to get an education, can you understand that that mind, that intellect, that collection of ideas is severely limited. It can only give you an education. It can only tell you how to conduct your business. It cannot go beyond that. If you understand that you are presently on the horizontal level, moving horizontally, never upward, if you understand the limitations of the way you are now thinking and living and feeling and, re and reacting, you won't make the dreadful mistake that most human beings make, which is this. Taking religious words, a so-called religious person will say, I talk about God, I talk about a future life somewhere. I talk about these things, and I think about them, and I quote religious books. Therefore, I am different. You are not. The mind is still operating on the level of its own familiarity, familiarity with words. And once, once a human being gets stuck on the level of repetition, it is enormously difficult to ever just sit down and talk to him and tell him, sir or madam, you have all these philosophies and you've read all these books and you attend religious services, but you're still the same frightened human being. Can you see that? If a person has become very hardened in this known self, this familiar self, if he's become very hardened in that, it is enormously difficult to get higher truths over to him. And now we're talking about us here in this room tonight. We're not talking about other people. We're talking about ourselves. We're talking about the need to see something that is higher than what we've lived before. 
we're trying to see that there is a, a way that is, listen please, talking about a way that is not right. It has not solved our problems. It has not changed anything. Somewhere we picked up all these philosophic ideas and thoughts and we thought that they were going to change us, comfort us, protect us, and nothing of the sort happened, and nothing of the sort can ever happen. There can be no change in the intellect except from one idea to another. Now, now I'll tell you what it's like. Imagine a schoolroom filled with young children, and during the night before they came to school that morning, someone had a vandal had snuck into the school, and here there's this large blackboard up in front of them. And this vandal had written all sorts of wrong things on the blackboard, wrong conclusions. For example, he said that the capital of France was Tokyo and gave wrong mathematical information, eight and eight make 20. A lot of misspelled words up there. And here's these little children. Now look, now look. They're, the children are looking at all these wrong conclusions, but they don't know they're wrong. They're taking them as right because they were put up there, and they thought the teacher had put them up. The teacher didn't put them up somewhere in the night. Someone who didn't know the answers put them up there. And so these children maybe go home the next day. The teacher will show up or something. They go home, and they take these ideas as being true. Now, that's the end of the illustration, but the beginning of an enormous task for us. Do you understand? The only reason we go wrong is because we're operating from wrong thoughts, wrong feelings. If, if we were right internally, things would go right. If things don't go right, there's something wrong with us. And it's about time we became humble enough to look inside ourselves and say, you know, that's true. Things are going wrong. I, going wrong. I don't like to admit it, but I can see that my, the collection of ideas that I operate from have only got me into trouble and they make me tense. And the last thing they do is give me that quality called contentment. So look, here we are. We have a known self, very familiar. You know your habits, you know how you think, you know how you go through your day. Well known to you, and you also know from personal experience that you haven't changed inwardly. All those quotations of philosophical books hasn't changed a thing. Look where this leaves us. Oh, what a leap we're going to have to take now. No reforming the known self. No reforming it. It can't be reformed. Haven't you tried to reform yourself? Haven't you said, I'm not going to get angry anymore. I'm going to treat my spouse better. And you treated your spouse the same way the next day. Haven't you seen, haven't you seen the impossibility of changing your actual nature? So if we can't reform, what does that leave us with? Listen. Listen to this word, and if you're really sincere about changing things, about being a different kind of a human being here on Earth, forget the word reform and think of the word replacement. Replacement. Now, a thing that's replaced is something that's entirely new. If you have an automobile and it won't fly, then you have to replace what you have as that mechanical automobile. And you have to replace it with an airplane and now you can fly. We're talking about the spiritual airplane which exists. Down to practical application. Haven't you ever felt that uh, you've missed out in life? Yes, you have. Haven't you felt that somehow you've been cheated, passed by, the other people have had favors and fortunes that you've never had. 
Now uh, listen to what I'm going to tell you. First of all, the feeling that you've been left out is false. It was false at the beginning, from the very start of that wrong attitude, that life has passed you by. Now don't you deny that that's in you. I know it is. Connects very much with envy, doesn't it? Jealousy of other people. So you feel that you haven't been favored like someone else has. They're more wealthy or more successful or more popular or better looking or whatever. So you have all these ideas. Do you know where that comes from? It comes from this known self. You have always known that idea. You have always had it. So where does it leave us? With replacement. Ah, now we have, a, we have something we're going to have to look at very, very carefully. How can the known self, what you already know about, your habits, your experiences, your tears, and your temporary excitements, how is that the mechanical automobile traveling horizontally? How is that going to replace anything? It isn't. It has nothing to give. But you still think so, and you try to make it give you something higher than itself, which is why you're always depressed. I know what's happening to your minds. I know that when your escapes have been cut off, you start to get a little nervous. You start to say, well, then if I can't change myself, what is the answer? What, you said, the speaker said that something higher than my, my, my mechanical mind and my known self exists. Where am I going to find it? You will never find it. That's the secret. That's the marvelous explanation. You can never find it. Because the mind, the intellect, cannot enter the kingdom. The airplane can't fly. It can only repeat itself. Now where does that leave you? It leaves you with understanding 100% what you have to do next, which is to do nothing at all but understand. The slightest action that you take to try to change yourself, to get rid of your temper, to get rid of your depression and your fear, the, the very first slight movement you make to get rid of it, will keep it. Because you're activating your mind, you're activating all these habits, all these escapes that you have that say, if I do something, I will feel different. You don't feel different at all. You have the temporary thrill maybe of meeting a new person or succeeding a bit out in the world. And nothing has changed. You see, here's the difficulty in talking about a transformed nature. You can't conceive it. How can the old understand the new? How can the automobile understand the airplane? There's no understanding in it at all. But what you can do is say to yourself, everything I've done to make myself happy has failed. All I have done is struggled with it getting more frustrated all the time, getting more angry all the time, feeling, tra ah, feeling trapped by life, wondering what it's all about. You can know what it's all about. There isn't a knowledge, there is an understanding that can come to you that will tell you what it's all about. But you can't originate it. You can't create it. And we'd like to do that so that we could call ourselves creators. That has to go. That's simply vanity, isn't it? Do you understand the phrase then that you can't save yourself? You cannot save yourself because you are the problem itself. How can the problem solve itself? 
Everything we've talked about up to now is very bright, very encouraging. Why? Because we're getting the facts of the situation. And I hope while I'm talking here that you are also watching what is going on inside of you when you hear these things. Do you find yourself resisting? Do you find yourself arguing? That is the known self in action. If you're going to become a spiritual detective, which you must do, you must even while you're listening and watching here now, even as you're listening and watching, you must also watch to see what's going in on inside of you so that your old nature doesn't again put something over on you and close your eyes to the beauty and the power of the truth. <clears throat> Most people are like a man trapped inside of a huge dark valley and he wants to get out but he looks up and he sees a ring of a mountain around him and he can't climb over the mountain so he doesn't know how to get out until he wanders around at the base of the mountain and he sees a cave opening and he looks in and he sort of senses, he understands that this cave, which is a tunnel really, starts at the inside of the valley and leads right directly through the base of the mountain and leads to the outside where there's freedom. He senses that, but he also, as he looks into the mouth of the cave, he becomes frightened. See, the, the dark valley of the canyon is known to him. That's the known self, his familiar habits. And he feels, if you can understand this, he feels comfortably miserable there. That is, he's, he's there and he knows what's going to happen next, even if it's heartache, even if it's disappointment. He knows what's going to happen next. When you start the spiritual journey, when you enter that dark cave for yourself, you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't, you don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know what terrors, as you call them, are around the next bend in the cave. But you, shall I tell you what you have to do? You have to go. You have to leave the known life that you have. As exciting as it is, as fulfilling as it seems to be, and enter that dark cave and face the terrors. And I'll tell you, you have to be brave. You have to enter the dark cave and say to yourself, Anything I have to go through is better than continuing to live the kind of a life I'm living now because it is no life at all. You know how we hide things from everyone else and we pretend and we put on smiles and we try to convince ourselves that everything is okay and that we have the answers? That has to go. And one way it can go is for you to enter that dark cave, as the man did, and when he got in there, he saw all sorts of things he didn't want to see. If you're going to investigate yourself, which you must do, you're going to see all sorts of things you don't want to see. You thought you were intelligent, and you see that you weren't. You thought that you were so sure of yourself, and you see that you tremble and fake it out in the outer world so people won't see. You'll see things that will upset you, but let me tell you, the first step inside that cave is the first step toward a true life, toward sanity, toward you being free. How's this? Listen to this. To you being free of whatever is now bothering you. What is it? You name it, and I will tell you that that is the first stage toward you erasing all that pain that you have and all that uncertainty and feeling left out and feeling cheated. So the man goes inside the cave and all he sees are dark, deep pools that he has to carefully walk around lest he fall in. And he hears strange sounds of strange creatures flying overhead. And he comes to dead ends in the cavern. And he has to retrace his, strip, his steps and he has to come back and start 
he has to come back and start all, all over again dozens of times. But look, let me tell you an attitude to take inside that cave that is investigating yourself. That's what it means to investigate yourself. What do you care how many times you have to start all over? What do you care every time you see you have to start all over? You have learned something. You've learned that you were in the wrong passage inside that cave. Now, isn't that nice to know that most people never learn it? While going down the wrong, the wrong passage, they're screaming to themselves, I'm doing right, I know what is right. Have you known people do that? You've known them. And you know how they're tearing themselves apart. We're going to be more intelligent than that. We're going to come back a thousand times if necessary, down back to the main passageway and start down again. If you do, and you keep going, a marvelous thing will happen to you one time. Let me tell you how it happened to the man, and you'll see the parallel. After a long, long time wandering around the cave, lonely and scared and not knowing which way to turn, at a certain point, there was just, just enough light in a certain section where he could look down, and what he saw was a used-up candle. And he looked down, and he picked it up, and a dozen thoughts raced to his mind at once. And he finally said to himself, this is, this is interesting, this is encouraging, this is marvelous. Someone has come this way before. Someone else has succeeded. Someone else came in this cave all alone, just as I'm doing because there's evidence of the candle, and he simply put that candle down and picked up another one and went on his way. And he went on his way, went along. He saw another candle and saw another and saw another. You're going to see signs of your spiritual journey, just as that man did. You're going to see yourself changing inwardly. You're going to see that your very nature no longer, for example, when you get out the other side of that mountain as that man did, you'll see yourself, you'll see yourself less and less and less concerned with your own life. And the reason you're less concerned with your own life because you understand, and listen to me, you understand that it is not your life anymore, therefore you don't have to be concerned. You were free. Look how concerned you are now, how desperately you explain to other people. Look how you, you run around wondering if you're doing the right thing or whether you're going to offend someone, wondering how you got trapped in this or that situation and how you're going to get out of it. Self-concern. When you ex on the other side of that mountain, I will tell you why you will have no self-concern because you won't have a self anymore. You won't have that usual self, that known self that we talked about earlier, that is always nagging you, that is always telling you how horrible you are, how many mistakes you've made, and always telling you that it's always going to be this way, and you listened to it, and you went into despair because you were listening to your old nature. When you got into the bright sunlight when you exit from that cave, you will understand how it happened, but you'll know that it did. You'll be walking out there and you'll say, how come I'm not so worried about my finances, for example? How come I'm not so concerned about losing that person anymore? How come everything is different? You. You won't have to search for an answer. You will be the answer because the answer is your new nature. And now you know. Now you understand the difference between the way you were years before and the way you are now. And you're not thinking about it. You are understanding it. You are comprehending it. And you, you know that a spiritual miracle has happened in your life. And you understand really and truly 
how rare it is for uh, any human being, man or woman, to actually come out of the old life and enter into this new one that we're talking about, how rare it is, because you understand how long you resisted, how you fought, how you thought that truth was the enemy, how you thought that you were being be destroyed as you went through that cave. And instead, little by little, the signs came. The signs came that you were doing the right thing after all. And you grew more sprightly in your step, more sure of yourself, till you finally exited out on the other side. Now look, at this point, you'll, you'll have no enthusiasm for giving credit to yourself for being spiritual. You'll understand that true spirituality, authentic spirituality, is something that is not created by you and cannot be because it's not of the old nature. It is, it is something that comes to you when we give up. When we give up what? Well, when we give up the old nature, when we give up our vanity, when we give up, when we give up trying to save ourselves. And what you find out eventually that there was no self there to save at all. There was only the illusion. There was only all these thoughts that crowded through our minds, jumbling through our minds, all these thoughts that said, you, you'd better save yourself by becoming a success in this life. And you maybe became a success, or you didn't become a success, but your ego then revolved around failure. But in either case, you said, I haven't made, and then you didn't have it made the next morning. Let me tell you, that light on the other side of that mountain is forever. There's no ups and downs in it. There's no anxiety in it. The anxiety you finally understand, that anxiety belongs to the old nature, not to the new. And now you have the new, and now you enter a state that is called rest.